here we have a problem where we're given a graph uh, that shows the relationship between two things, and then we're given some information about a couple of points on that graph, and then we're asked to find some information about a third point. Uh, let's read this and see if we can understand it. it. It's The first sentence says, suppose that the weight in pounds of an airplane is a linear function of the amount of fuel in gallons in its tank. Well, what does that mean? When one thing is a linear function of another thing, uh, you can graph the relationship between the two of them as a straight line. So if you look at this, the, this what this graph is saying is that the weight of an airplane goes up as you put more fuel into it. If there's more fuel in the airplane, it's going to weigh more. That should make sense. The fuel weighs something, so that would increase the, the total weight of the airplane. So let's take a look at the data we have here. It says when carrying 20 gallons of fuel, the airplane weighs 2,016 pounds. I'm just going to sketch this in on the graph because I really like um, sketching out pictures to help me understand something. So here's 20 gallons of fuel. The airplane then weighs 2,016. And then it says when carrying 55 gallons, so let's put another point on here. We'll call this 55. It weighs 2,219. And then it says, how much does the airplane weigh if it's carrying 70 gallons of fuel? So I'm just going to throw a 70 in here. But we need to find what the y value is here what at, at this point, And we don't know. So how do we get that? Well, the slope of this line really represents how much the weight goes up per gallon of fuel. And if we know that number, how much the weight of the airplane goes up uh, when you add a gallon of fuel, we can just add the difference here, 55 to 7, that'd be 15 more gallons of fuel. We can just multiply whatever that weight is by 15 and add it to this weight of 2219. So what we want to do first here is find the slope of the line. And slope, I'm sure you remember, is rise over run. The thing that's rising here is the weight of the airplane. That's what's uh, going up. And um, the thing that's running or moving to the right on the graph is the amount of, of fuel. So let's take the data from the first two points and figure out um, the rise over the run. So the rise here, it goes up from 2016 to 2219. If I subtract 2016 from 2219, I should get 203. So that's our rise. That's how much it moved up. And our run is 20 to 55. So that's a difference of 35. So this is the slope of this line. Uh, if we do the division here, looks like 5.8. So what this means is this is 5.8 pounds that the airplane increases in weight per gallon of fuel. So here we have 15 more gallons of fuel that are being added. So we could take 15, multiply it by this weight of a gallon of fuel that we just figured out times 5.8. Let me pull out my calculator again. So that's 87. So 87 more pounds is what the weight of the airplane goes up by if you add 15 uh, gallons of fuel. We just need to add that to this weight right here, 2219. So 2219 plus 87. And that should equal 2306. So that's the weight of the airplane in pounds after uh, we add that fuel and we get up to 70 gallons of fuel. Let's try another one like that. This one's a little bit different. Um, just looking at the graph first, we have candle height and burning time. And what we notice is the height goes down the longer you burn the candle. And that should make sense too. When you burn candles, they get shorter. So uh, the graph uh, makes sense. Let's read the problem. Suppose that the height in centimeters of a candle is a linear function of the amount of time in hours that it has been burning. After seven hours of burning, a candle has a height of 24.6 centimeters. Well, let's just graph that here. So here's seven hours, and it's at 24 point six. All right. After 18 hours of burning, its height is 22.4. So right there, 22.4.
And we want to know what's the height of the candle after 16 hours. Oh, so somewhere in between these two at 16, we want to know this value right here. Again, what we're going to do is find the slope of this line. What the slope of this line is going to represent is how many centimeters the candle um, loses for every hour that it burns. So we'll find our slope with rise over run. The rise here is going to be a negative value because the slope is going down. And over this period from 7 to 18, it goes from 24.6 to 22.4. So the rise would be a negative 2.2. And 7 to 16, that's, sorry, 7 to 18, that's 11 hours. So that's our slope. But we can uh, make that number maybe a little easier um, to work with by just doing the division. If you plug that into your calculator, that should be a negative 0.2. So what this means is the candle height drops by 0.2 every hour that you burn it. Now we want to know where we're at at 16 hours. And I've got a data point here for 18 hours. We're at 22.4 at 18 hours. Where were we two hours before that? Well, we were 0.4 taller than that. So so I'm, I'm kind of going backwards here. And, and I would end up on with 22.8. You could also just start it from the 7. To get from 7 to 16, that's going to be nine hours. So you start at 24.6 at the seven hours. And then you would um, subtract uh, the, the 0.2 for every hour. So we're going to subtract 0.2 times the nine hours. So that's a, a 1.8. So 24.6 minus 1.8. And you should get to 22.8, just like we got the last time. So that is our answer, 22.8 centimeters. So that's a little work uh, with some applications of linear functions.